Leo, in this ever crazy changing world, it's good to have two sources of information that can help guide and inspire you. The tarot cards and the astrology stars. They're like having two wise friends. The tarot card for the first week is the death card. The tarot card for the second week is the hermit. The tarot card for the third week is the Knight of Cups. And the tarot card for the fourth week is the Seven of Pentacles. I hope you will like this video and also press the little bell for notifications when my new videos come out. Leo, the tarot card for the first week of the month is the Death card. It suggests the ever-changing cycles of nature with endings becoming new beginnings. Your world is changing, but it also is full of new potential. So don't get stuck in the past. Keep the faith, go through the changes, and move to the future. Now, as we look down into the astrology, the month begins with three interesting oppositions. The sun in the fourth house opposes Jupiter in the tenth. So you need to have a balance between your career responsibilities and your home and family issues. If you handle work efficiently, you will have plenty of time to enjoy home and family projects. Now, Mercury in the fourth house also opposes Uranus in the tenth house, putting a spotlight on the importance of good communications and the use of new technologies or maybe even problems with technology. You may be able to streamline your work by learning how to use the latest AI applications. Venus in the second house will oppose Neptune in the eighth, suggesting that you need to keep one eye on joint finances. And speaking of new technologies, you may want to research the latest trends so you understand where to invest. The tarot card for the second week of the month is the Hermit. This card represents the spiritual wisdom that is offered to the seeker on the path. The hermit has seen the challenges of life, and he now holds in his lantern the possible answers. Will the seeker follow the advice of spirit? Now, as we look into the astrology, week two is energized by Mars in the fourth house, opposing Uranus in the 10th house of career and status. Now, this energy is erratic and can lead to some unexpected changes in your career. You may have to deal with a new situation or a person who is being willful to a fault. If it's the boss, you might have to bite your tongue and do the best you can to meet difficult demands. This is very important since there is a new moon in Scorpio in the fourth house, and that also opposes Uranus in the 10th. So make sure you take the time to balance work demands against responsibilities at home. This is an emotionally charged new moon, so you may feel like you have to walk on your tippy toes to get through the week. And remember just to keep you know, the idea of your security in mind. The tarot card for the third week of the month is the Knight of Cups. A man in armor is seated on a white horse. He extends a cup before him. His helmet signifies imagination and there is water behind him. He suggests inspiration, creativity, and emotion. And you may receive an offer that has positive emotional impact. It could be love and romance. Whew. Now, as we look into the astrology, the third week begins with a powerful Sun-Mars conjunction in your fourth house. Now, may, maybe work had taken priority last week, and if it did, you may have to make up for any missed time at home. Family members may be a little demanding, and you don't want to upset the apple cart. If you put any home projects at home, on hold, this would be a good time to resurrect them and use any excess energy in a positive manner. If you take the bull by the horns, you might be surprised to find you get some needed support. 
because there is an easy trine between the Sun and Mars to Neptune in the eighth house. This will help you make follow through on your promises that you made at home and give you maybe a little extra financial support that might surprise you. The tarot card for the last week of month is the Seven of Pentacles. This card represents a need to take inventory of what has been done. This can represent any type of achievement. You have worked hard and achieved some success, but you may need to reflect on what you have achieved and where do you want to go in the future? Now, as we look into the astrology, the month ends as the sun enters optimistic Sagittarius and your fifth house of pleasure and creativity. Now, this is a great energy that can bring opportunities for fun and enjoyment. This is a good time to start a creative project, and you may find there's a little romance in the air. Woohoo! So take opportunities seriously, for this energy may be modified as Saturn squares both the Sun and Mars from the 8th house. Make sure you discuss any financial or investment plans with your partner and take some time for an intimate conversation. The month ends with questionable communications as Mercury in the 5th will square Neptune also in the 8th house, so you have to make sure you're on the same page with either business or romantic partners, and uh, that can be a fun discussion. Hi, I'm Reverend Tom Kearns, and this is my story. If you are a spiritual seeker, it may help you on your journey. I believe your spiritual development is as important as your religion. If you look at Christianity, it focuses on the life of Jesus. But Jesus was never a Christian. He was Jewish. If this thought intrigues you, you'll enjoy my new book, Light from Water, Freeing Jesus. It's available on Amazon.com and through fine bookstores. And it may help you on your spiritual journey. I'd like to thank you for watching. I'd like to thank you for listening. Please like my videos and share them with your friends. And if you'd like to know more information and how to get help personally, get a private psychic and spiritual reading or a natal transit astrology chart, go to my website, professorastrology.com, and go to the private services page. And that's where you'll get the information. It's professorastrology.com, and I hope you have a great month.